Hello, and today I'm going to be showing you how to have a bad hair day. Nah, not really. I'm going to be showing you how to make a microworm culture. And I'm going to tell you a little bit about them first, and then I'm going to crack on and show you how to actually get the stuff and make one. Commonly known as microworms to us fish keepers, their binomial name is actually Panagrellus redivius, which basically means sour paste. They are a favourite for newly hatched fish, such as the Siamese fighter fish. These tiny little roundworms measure about 50 micrometres in diameter and just a millimetre in length. Alright, so let's get on with how to culture a microworm culture. And to start off with, there are five main things that you need. You need an existing microworm culture. This is what an existing microworm culture looks like. Now, they will crawl all over the lid and up the sides. And when it comes to actually feeding your fish, what you want to do is you want to wipe it, your finger along the sides, along the top, and dip it into your tank. Uh, one thing will be enough. Um, if you're a bit squeamish, use the end of a paintbrush or a cotton wool bud or something, just to take them out and put them on. That's what it looks like. Or you can buy them online for a couple of quid. I got mine on eBay for two pounds. Uh, you will need an empty takeaway tub pot thing, a uh, minimum of an inch deep, deeper if possible. Uh, you'll need some porridge, oats. Uh, see, this is just value stuff. It cost me less than a pound. Uh, I think it was like 70p or something. Uh, you'll need some dried active yeast. This cost me again less than a pound, I think it was 90p. And some scissors. So all in all, it's going to cost you less than £5, and if you do it right, the culture will actually last you years. It should never actually die. The only thing you're going to need to rebuy is more oats when they run out. I mean, this one kilogram bag I've calculated will probably last me a year. And this yeast, you just need a pinch at a time, so that's going to last me years. So I'll show you how to prepare the home for them. So here we have the empty takeaway tub, and what we're going to do is we're going to take the lid off. Put the actual tub to one side, and with the lid, what we're going to do is, the scissors and the lid, we're going to actually create some air holes inside. And to do that, what you want to do is you want to get the scissors with a sharp pointy bit, make sure they're all the way open, and then stick it in one of the corners, and then just twist it. Keep your finger underneath and be nice and gentle. Be careful of the table underneath as well, and your think finger. And just keep twisting it until it's all the way through. You want a hole, no, about that big. I mean, it's not big at all. Um, probably about a few millimeters in diameter. So you want to do repeat this process until you've got about uh, six holes evenly spread out. So I'm going to crack on with that. Twist the scissors until they pass through. Be careful not to crack the lid, because that would not be very good, would it? No, it wouldn't. Don't worry, the microworms will not crawl out of the holes. So there we go, that's complete. That's got six, eight holes in it, and yeah, so that's that bit done. So when it comes to adding the porridge to your tub, all you want to do is pour some in. Now I recommend about half a centimetre deep, a centimetre at the most. Um, yeah, that's a good amount. Take a look at it from the side. Yeah, that's about a half centimetre thick. That's plenty. 
and then we're going to add some water to it. When adding water, you just want lukewarm water. Not too hot, otherwise, when you put the microworms in, or when you add the yeast, it will denature them, and eventually you might kill them off. So, lukewarm. Add it in, sort of dribble it in. Not too much. Remember, you can always add more, but you can't really take it out. You have to start again. So, there we go. All right, now when you're tipping it up, no water should really dribble out or anything. You want it to be a nice sort of paste. Workable, but not too runny. That's perfect, that is. Next up, you want to add a pinch of yeast. Just make sure that your hands are dry because if you get the yeast wet in the tub, it'll activate it and it'll all go off. So, just a pinch and then sprinkle it over the top of your moist oats. That's all you need. Now, I heard somewhere that the yeast is what the actual microworms feed on. However, some people make the cultures without adding yeast and yet they still multiply. So I'm not sure how true that is, but I just do it because it helps them develop quicker, I've observed. So just a pinch of yeast, and now it's time to add the microworms! Yay! Now, as I said earlier, when you're adding the microworms, just use your finger or the uh, end of a paintbrush, cotton wool bud, to harvest the microworms. Get your finger, wipe it along the lid, cure microworms. In doing this, um, it stops you picking up any of the original oats that are already in there, and because obviously they've been there for some time, they'll start to go off, so you just want fresh microworms in there, and nothing but will go off. So, just a few fingers full. There we go, I'll harvest them. That's pure microworms. Now with the old culture, you can literally just wash it down the sink. Take it out, tip it away, wash it out, and then when you come to changing uh, it again, you can just use this tub instead of the other tub. There you go. And what you want to do is, you just want to get a finger, Put a blob there, another finger, put a blob the other side, maybe a blob in the middle, the rest, blob it in all the corners. And voila. Put the lid on that and there is one new microworm culture. Give it a week and it will end up as the same stage as this. Now, they, they can last some time. I mean, I've had them last two weeks, even three weeks. Um, if you want to keep them fresh and stop things going off, I recommend change them every week to every two weeks. If they start to go mouldy quickly, then change them to save the culture because you can actually kill the culture if it completely goes mouldy. Uh, so, I hope you enjoyed this video, and happy microworm culturing and feeding to your fish. See ya!